Boy, poor Maria, I think it's rather euphemistic of her to call this time in her life a transition. Her husband has been unfaithful. She has lost her parents. Her children are moving away. I, I mean, in, in a good way. They're going off to college and things. But that's a lot to deal with. Here's my guest today to talk about this. I've got Rosa Blasi, who was cheated on by her ex, a former professional athlete. Vicki Ziegler, she is a family law attorney and author of the book, Your Premarital Survival Guide. And Michelle Goland, clinical psychologist. Rosa, we'll start with you. Why do you think powerful men think they can get away with this? I think when you're given, you know, that kind of power and responsibility, not, <laughs> this is my theory, I haven't done a conclusive study, not so much excites you. And so what ends up exciting you are, are the dangerous, the shiny newness. You mentioned narcissism, you mentioned entitlement. I think it, entitlement goggles are far more dangerous than any beer goggles. And that is, I, I think that's the crux of it. Michelle, you agree? I absolutely agree. It's about entitlement, about power, and it's about seeking the danger mm -hmm. that that gives them. And they, these are men that get a big rush out of things in their life that the mundaneness of a marriage or a solid marriage isn't, doesn't give them that. Vicki Ziegler, is that what you find in some of the cases that you're working with? Uh, yeah, unfortunately, Dr. Drew, I think certain people in power, people that are in the public eye, believe that they are untouchable, they won't get caught, and that the law perhaps does not apply to them. And they are sadly mistaken, as we are seeing in this case unfold before our eyes. You can't hide a love child. Ultimately, this child will know and now knows that Arnold Schwarzenegger is, that is his father or her father. It's a major problem and we need to teach America that this is not okay. These are not role models. And, and you guys, Rosa, Michelle, w w you know, what do we tell people who are out there watching and go, oh, surprise, powerful men cheat. Oh, people, with men with lots of money cheat. As though our but expectation is that a guy, there's behind that is a weird expectation that a man would become powerful and get a lot of money in order to access more and varied sexual partners. Rosa, you, 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 you reacted to that. What do you say to that? To, the, to what? What, what that, I'm saying, that, that, that there are people out there who believe that the reason men become powerful and make money is so they can do this. Oh, That's what, I, well, I look disagree at my, my, that. Get a picture of Dave over there shaking his head up and down. He's shaking his head but, vigorously. That's what he believes. What, what I know as a relationship expert, Dr. Drew, is that, you know, 50% of men cheat, 40-something of women cheat, and so it, it's about access. I don't care if you are rich and powerful, you're still gonna cheat if you wanna cheat. I mean, I don't care if you work at McDonald's or you're you know, a psychologist. It doesn't matter if you're gonna cheat. It's not just about So is it only cheaters power. that become powerful and successful? Is that why they become powerful and successful? And then my, the flip side of this, what's with the women that go for these guys? Don't they know better? Well, <laughs> <laughs> you know, well, no, you, but you had a, you didn't, you didn't <laughs> cheat with him. You had a marriage. That's what yeah, I'm saying. Yeah, I, I'm yeah. talking about the women that cheat he with had the a guys. Double life. I mean, no. it's everybody's going to jump to the. I, I wonder if she knew that. You know, I, I find more compelling is the, lately the people that are being cheated on in the press are incredibly successful. Women, um, are the, the woman behind the man who's cheating, are, are successful and intelligent in their own rights. They're not, you know. Well, often that can be part of the behind. dynamic that they're, they are also deballed. And their balls yes. are in their purse, for lack of a better term. Hold on. I'm going to ask Vicki Ziegler if she <laughs> finds that to be true yeah. in the case that she's dealing with. Yes? Uh, you know what? I think it's about people having a moral compass. I don't care how much money yeah. you have. You have no entitlement to hurt somebody else. Arnold Schwarzenegger said, I love and respect my wife at one point. Well, last time I didn't see infidelity in that component of that sentence. And I think, Dr. Drew, the real question really becomes here, are you preparing to get married and are you committed to stay in a happy, healthy, monogamous relationship or not? And times are tough when people are married for a long time and children come into the mix, but you have to work at it. And if you don't work at it, get divorced. That's why it's a 60 billion dollar a year industry but don't cheat i also think cheating is a symptom not the cause there's something yes. going on with arnold schwarzenegger i don't know what it is but i don't blame maria shriver i believe it's believe uh blame story. his problems on why he's cheating okay i completely agree with you and, and it is yes. something we're going to continue to explore this is um, these are amazing developments in a story that unraveled just this last week Best first lady that the state ever had. Lines flight. Orbits doesn't have them. But you'll find all 3,400 of them at AA.com every day. 
Maria is an extraordinary wife and a great partner. And she's my partner. She's the best first lady that the state ever had. We're talking about Arnold Schwarzenegger's shocky admission that he has fathered a secret love child at least 10 years ago, an admission that apparently forced the breakup of his marriage to Maria Shriver. My guests continue to be Rosa Blasi, who was married to a, an NFL athlete who cheated on her, Michelle Golland, a clinical psychologist, and Vicki Ziegler remains with us, a family. Joining us now here at the table is Sarah Simons. She is a reformed mistress and the author of a book, Having an Affair, A Handbook for the Other Woman. All right, Sarah, you're going to bring us that point of view. So how did the baby's mother live this life for a decade while living and working with and around the Schwarzeneggers for something like 20 years? Good evening, Dr. Drew. Thanks for having me on. Well, as the world's foremost infidelity analyst, as soon as I heard that Arnold and Maria were splitting up, I knew it would be down to infidelity. I predicted it. The fact that there is a secret child is a little bit shocking. But the most shocking thing to me is that he did keep it a secret for 10 years. That takes a lot of time and the whole time that he was in power in, in California. It, we have to wonder what else did he keep a secret? Oh, very, very interesting. Maria Shriver released a statement. Here it is. She says, this is a painful and heartbreaking time. As a mother, my concern is for the children. I ask for compassion, respect, and privacy as my children and I try to rebuild our lives and heal. Sarah, I'm going to go back to you. Does the other woman worry about the impact her relationship is having on the wife's children, the, the, the children of this man? And by the same token, how does she manage this uh, half-brother of the other siblings? Well, first of all, my respect totally goes out to Maria Shriver for actually leaving him or separating. So many wives stay, and that just means he's going to do it again and again. So respect to her. As the other woman, I can honestly say that we're not the married ones, so we take the man's lead. It doesn't make it right, but when he's willing and able to break his marital vows, it's really not plausible that we're going to be that worried about them. I never really understand why the other woman or the mistress wants to have a secret child, though I think that's very selfish for all concerned, especially the child. But what it does tell us is that he must have had a whole team of people around him for the past 10 years, you know, managing her, managing her emotions, paying her off. Now, did that many that he was paying her to stay quiet come out of his private finances, and thus his family finances? Did it come out of state finances? And as I said, a cheat is a cheat. So if Arnold was cheating and lying and covering up for that long, you have to wonder if he was cheating the whole state of California as well. Now, Rosa, you were cheated on. T mm -hmm. Tell people your story a little bit uh, and, and respond to Sarah's statement. Uh, well, my story is that I, I ended up writing a book through HarperCollins called Jock Itch and Misadventures of a Retired Jersey Chaser because I learned the hard way that even a guy who's not a big franchise player still is going to behave um, in the classic way that most athletes do, uh, the majority of athletes do. To direct to her question, you know, she's bringing up a good point. If you're a cheater in love, are you a cheater in life? And, and the question becomes, what else is there? I think that's a valid point. I can't believe I'm agreeing with the other woman, but that's a pretty valid point um, yes. the, <laughs> that, that she brings up. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it, it does... It does well, let me ask Vicky, Vicky Ziegler, who deals more on yeah. the legal side of this, are these guys that cheat or, or uh, practice infidelity, are they also cheating on their taxes and doing other nefarious things? Well, one can go hand in hand, and I hate to generalize. It does happen often, but I think it's something that they're not being fulfilled within themselves. And I think the message really is that people, men in particular, people in power, they need help. So the assistance from a professional like yourself, Dr. Drew, or a, a life coach isn't a bad thing. And I think a lot of times men are raised that it's not a good thing to go get therapy and go get help to deal with their issues instead of going out and cheating on their wives, on their taxes, on their business partners. So I think that's one of the messages that I'd like to send out to your viewers to say it's okay to get help. And I think the other problem that most of these gentlemen in the public eye, celebrities, athletes, and the like, they have a lot of attention thrown at them, and there are temptations. And they need to look within themselves to remember where they came from, remember how they were raised, and think about what the consequences are before they do something to their spouse and their children. Oh, and right, and think about what the impact of their behavior is on their kids. Uh, Arnold's son, mm -hmm. Arnold Maria's son, Patrick, who I think changed his name to uh, Maria's last name now. It, it's, you know, he obviously had a lot of resentments here. He twittered something today. He mm -hmm. said, some days you feel like S, some days you want to quit and just be normal for a bit. Yet, I love my family till death do us part. Also, their daughter, Catherine, she tweeted something. She tweeted, 
This is definitely not easy, but I appreciate your love and support as I begin to heal and move forward in life. I will always love my family. And to your point, Vicki, uh, Michelle and I yeah. would absolutely agree with you that even if there has been a transgression, relationships can be salvaged and treatment does work. And they've all used the word heal in here repeatedly. And I would say you wouldn't heal from any other illness without the help of a professional. Right. Here's a perfect opportunity to get help and assistance to make sure the healing is effective and complete. Michelle, you agree? Right. I think one of the issues that I want to make sure is looked at is the fact, Dr. Drew, that as parents, we are not only modeling to our children what it means to be a mother and a father, but a husband and wife. A so relationship, we, any exactly. relationship, yeah. But how, you know, my husband is treating me is a direct correlation of how my daughter believes she should be treated. Yeah. And so we have to value marriage. And I think what everyone keeps saying is it's a symptom. I absolutely agree. Infidelity is a symptom of, of a what? marriage. Of what? Of a marriage that is not working of a marriage that really? something is happening, whether it's too much distance, that there's not enough connection, or, or, or someone has a drug and alcohol right. issue. Or, or there's or something sex. wrong with the guy. Yeah, right. well, I mean, I <laughs> yeah. and I have to say, I'm gonna say, women yeah. cheat too. Yes, they do, but I usually, let's be that. clear, usually when they're not getting their emotional needs met. Correct. Men cheat when they are sex addict, when they think they can get away with it or they're entitled to it, right? When this they, is, well, uh, my ex-husband cheated on our wedding night after we consummated our marriage, so... <laughs> but that's bizarre. I mean, that's like bizarre. <laughs> yeah. But, but that, my you point know what? is, yeah, I think that's a symptom of Vicky, the guy. Vicky, 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 your point. Yeah. Go ahead. And that's, well, that's lack of conscience. I mean, that's just horrific to go through something like right. that. But also, fathering a, uh, fathering a child out of wedlock Aren't you using protection? Aren't you thinking about the consequences? Clearly not. But that's one of the things also that I think people that are watching the show need to think about. You know, it's not just the consequence that you may get caught. Uh, your children may find out your wife. You have a child now to raise, and, and look at how they feel. And now they have yes. to integrate to this other family and, of four. That's right. really and, important and, and here. Consequences yes. apply. Yes, Vicki. And, and yeah. I, you don't think the you consequences think apply, consequences but, but I will apply. say this that it's equivalent to me to somebody leaving a crack pipe or a joint out or right. something. And that doesn't happen the first time you smoke crack. That happens right. when you're far yeah. along in your crack. Right. Sarah, I want to address that to you. Yeah. Why They evidently did not use a condom or practice birth control. That seems reckless. Would you agree? Absolutely. But I have to say, going back to something you said earlier, Dr. Drew, these guys are so narcissistic and have such huge, huge egos. They think they're you know, not dealing with the real world. And yes, I've been having a, I did have a, an affair with a high profile politician and they're not careful. And as the other woman, actually, we should be careful. But you have to wonder if this other woman had an agenda. She's going to get paid for life now for having his child. I'm sure that Arnold was when he when he was having an affair with her, didn't imagine for one minute there was going to be a baby as a product of it. So we have to wonder how manipulative this other woman was. But I will just say it's very convenient that this affair comes out and this love child comes out just after he gets gets out of power. It has to make me wonder if he had some kind of deal to keep her quiet for the 10 years. And if that's the case, boy, is she going to want to talk now and it won't be pretty. So he's got two scorned women, an unhappy scorned wife and a mistress who's been kept a secret for 10 years. You can expect this story to run and run and the details to get more juicy and more juicy. Well, I think you're right. It's appropriate that we hold some accountability to the women involved with this as well, the, the ones that are doing the cheating. Okay. I, I salute I, but, her for not coming out right away well, and okay. getting her 15 I, but, minutes but in Vanity Fair. But the fact Fair is, article. enough already for for crying out loud. Enough. I mean, really, we how many more years are we going to report these stories about these guys? And you know, digest this material with your kids. Tell them about how you want them to behave as young men and young women, how you absolutely find this unacceptable behavior regardless of their position in life. It's up to us as parents to digest what is now becoming a normative background noise in our culture. We've got to, we've got to get through to our kids about this. Thank you, Rosa. Thank you to Michelle. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Vicki. Now, we've all heard the